The five stages of help anxiety. Now these may be different for you, but these are what I've experienced. And what generally when I've spoken to other people, I found that these are the five steps that it seems to take from start to finish. Step one is trigger. So this is where it comes from. So we hear maybe about a disease from someone during a conversation. Maybe we're watching TV and we can find out something about a disease that we didn't know existed before and we connect the dots. It's, it's that initial stage where the health anxiety, the anxiety, the hypochondria or cancer anxiety, whatever it is, the it that's where it stems from. So whatever you call it, that's the, the moment where you learn about something or you find out about something or something clicks. It could be a symptom maybe as well, perhaps a symptom leads you to find your own trigger. So maybe you have a symptom and then you do a little bit of research, not really worried yet, and you see that C word, or you see something else and that's the initial trigger. So it, this is where it comes from. So it, the initial anxiety has to come from somewhere. So the first step is it comes from that, that trigger. The second step then leads naturally into worry. So we've seen that word on Google, we've heard that thing, we've maybe connected the dots that we've seen something on TV, maybe a medical program, and we've gone, oh, you know what, I've slightly felt like that recently, or I've had that feeling recently, I felt a bit tired recently, maybe I've got that, or I've had headaches too, so uh, could that be me? So it's that beginning stage of the worry, we're not quite yet into it, we're not at the worst part of the, the central core of the, the steps, <laughs> um, but the phase, or should I say, um, yeah, the five st phases, isn't it? the phase of health anxiety, the five stages, maybe that's a nice way to think of it. But step two is that that worry. So we're just planting that seed within ourselves, the, the seed of doubt that maybe this could, the dots could be connected. And from that trigger, something's worrying us. We think that there could be something wrong with us that's the, the worry. Because we then think in step two that something's wrong with us, we think that we might have a disease, perhaps it's the, the C word, perhaps it's another word that we think and we're worried about it. This natural worry leads quite quickly, I found, to number three. So once we've connected the dots, once we've had the trigger and then connected the dots to a worry, we've landed on something we're worried about we're then going to panic. Completely natural. In our head, this is logical. We've heard something and it's almost like the fates have told us that it's connected to something else. So we've got, we, we should be worried about this and then that worry quickly leads to panic. And in that panic stage for me, it usually happens at a night time. So maybe say for example, this is something that's happened to me for the first three stages in the past. I'll hear about something in the day, on the radio, or you know, this has happened before, I've heard something on Radio 1, on their little news beat time, the 15 minutes that I've heard that there is a, a disease. I've then questioned whether I've got it. I planted that seed of doubt, I've got that worry. So I've then gone, oh, I've got, I had that, how did I have that symptom recently? Like, oh, I kind of, kind of feel like that. And I'm, I'm thinking about it, I'm maybe researching a bit about it, connecting the dots, planting that seed of doubt. And then in the evening, bam, what happens if this is true? I'm panicked. And then it's usually in the evening when I don't really feel like there's anything I can do because it's so late. And it's in that panic that we we feel just so overwhelmed. We don't really know what to do with ourselves. We feel really high up, you know. I, well, I, I say we, I feel really het up and high and um, light. Like I feel like I can't really sit still. Basically like you're having a panic attack is how I found it. Maybe you skip step three and maybe you go straight to step four, which we're gonna to go to for a second. But for when I'm in, when I've not been treating health anxiety and when I've been letting it run through and when it's, well not letting, but when it's happened, when all five, when the full beginning to end of the phase has happened from trigger to the end, the panic is the core for me. It's the, it's the bit that, that really your whole body just sinks in and the anxiety is out of control and 
the fear is so overwhelming because it's beyond what you can even imagine and the anxiety of playing out all the scenarios it, it's an overwhelming feeling for me that subsides after an initial panic maybe a couple of nights a night a moment um, even just a brief panic maybe it is for you this then goes to the obsession this is usually a bit that lands over a certain amount of time and the worry and the panic still pop in and out from the trigger but the obsession leads over a longer period of time and it's seeking so it's constantly trying to reassure ourselves that the panic and the worry are, are wrong you know we're seeking reassurance from friends family we're googling all the time we're you know getting tests and then we're questioning the tests we're questioning the doctors we're on youtube maybe uh, maybe you're watching these videos to try and help you but most likely you're not watching this if you're unaware you're watching a video of you of the disease that's what i did i would sit there and watch videos of cancer survivor stories to make myself feel better of a disease that i don't even have <laughs> it's a lot isn't it that like that's a lot and for me, the obsessive bit would be the longest period of time. So the panic would be like the trigger, the worry and the panic could ha often happen in a day, a couple of days, a couple of hours, but it's the obsession which would last the longest. So it would go over a few weeks, a few months in some case, and it would. I'd really find it hard to think of anything else really. Or even if I was doing something else, it would kind of be in the back of my mind. And then we have step five, which is, the end of the phase it's the ease and that can come from hopefully <laughs> help from me and my channel ease of john but maybe it's from something that you found that works and i'm going to try and look at as many different ways um to help ease it i did a video on tuesday talking about um my best advice i think but also i think i'm going to try and work on some practical steps i'm going to try and do some meditations as well um like a, a, a challenge that i'm working on but it's the ease that whatever it's the end of it maybe that'll come from a doctor's appointment maybe that'll come from a result maybe that'll come from forgetting maybe it'll come from too much time has passed that so i know now it's not that you know too much time has passed so i know it's not that almost like waiting out that's probably the worst thing to do because you're waiting out of the phase um or the symptom goes Maybe we shift focus from the symptom. Maybe we get another trigger that leads us into a different thing that makes us forget about this one. That's pretty bad as well. We, but somehow this initial trigger, worry, panic and obsession eases. And it always does. That's the reality of the situation. It always eases because we don't have it. So it's, it's easing that situation. Obviously when I say we don't have it, that is not to be radical with your health. I'm not a medical professional. And the, the fine line between health anxiety is when are, we, when are we actually actively doing what we're told to do and take care of our health and go to see a GP? You know, and I'm, I'm in England and you hear all the time stuff on chat shows about if you've got this, you need to get it checked or it's too late. Terrifying if you've got health anxiety, but also it's true. You you know, you you need to get things checked because then it, it we we can catch things early, which for the issue is with health anxiety that causes anxiety as well. So it's going back to the reality and the anxiety. The reality is you're being proactive of your health, completely normal. The anxiety of that is this, this whole phase from trigger to worry, to panic, to obsession, to ease. That's not reality. None of that is reality. All of that is happening within us and the panic, the worry, all of the negative feelings create a stem of a million other things. Why am I talking about the five, five things? Um, the reason I'm talking for them is because I think the more we understand how our mind works and the more we understand our health anxiety and our anxiety in general, the easier it'll get. I promise, like the easier it gets. So the more that we're just on it with our mind and that we're thinking um i'm be i'm triggered by something today i wasn't worried about this yesterday is this then something i should reality go and get checked at the doctors maybe
But how do I, the question to ask ourselves is, how do we stop going from trigger to worry? And then that worry to panic, that panic to obsession. And then ease, which isn't, we don't want to be even anywhere near ease. We want to stop it before it even gets to that. We don't want to get to the core. We want to stop it in its tracks. And maybe we will bleed into worry sometimes. Or maybe we'll, you know, get to panic sometimes and get obsessed sometimes. But just recognising that, oh wait, am I, is this happening to me? Are these five stages happening to me? Is this the reality or is this my anxiety of what's happening? I think can make a huge, huge difference just recognising what those five things are. Maybe they're different for you. So if you have five different things, please let me know what is the sort of trajectory that your anxiety has gone on. But generally when I've been speaking to people, excuse me, I found that it's those five that have been the ones that seem to appear a lot in conversations and that's definitely what my experience has been as well and obviously that just the word panic and just the word worry doesn't mean that's the only thing that's happening you know it's a stem of things from that you know <laughs> like obsession is like a lot of different things that are going on with our mind during that time um but as i've said a lot before recognizing what your mind is doing is powerful just recognizing that and I really hope that together with me, together with whatever you're doing, maybe CBT yourself, I took, I did CBT, maybe some therapy, maybe, a, you know, trying meditation or trying things yourself. I, I know it will make a big difference to your quality of life if, you, if you're constantly feeling like, I felt like I was constantly in this trajectory where a few months a year, it would kind of be a write off because I'd be worried and I'd, I'd feel so frustrated because I'd feel like, I know this is not reality, but it's so overwhelming. It's taking all my energy. And then it's sort of like, I felt like, like, oh, what am I doing? It's not, I'm not enjoying this time. It's like stealing my time. And I don't want that to happen to you. And I definitely don't want that to happen um, for anyone watching this video or um, going forward. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your day.